So today we got some big news about future Apple Silicon Mac processors. Some of this is very exciting and to be honest, some of it makes me a little bit nervous. So today, let's break it down. So today we've got some pretty big stories about upcoming Macs, and the first one is actually nothing to do with Apple Silicon. In the release notes for an updated version of Apple's bootcamp software, it makes references to the 16-inch MacBook Pro 2019 and 2020. But of course, there is no 2020 16-inch MacBook Pro yet. So this leak all but confirms what we've been expecting for a while now, that there is a new 16-inch MacBook Pro on the way. But for those of you who are really, really excited for a high-powered Apple Silicon machine, don't get your hopes up just yet. This is most likely going to be an Intel refresh. Now, in terms of timing, we should expect this new 16-inch MacBook Pro to come out about the same time as Apple's November Mac event. Now that we are pretty sure is gonna be on November 17th, so it would make sense for Apple to release a 16 inch MacBook Pro around that same time, although they could do it before. Most likely it won't be talked about at the event because this is a, just a normal spec bump could be done with a press release, so we probably won't get any screen time for it. Now, you may remember that the original 16-inch MacBook Pro launched in the second week of November of 2019, so this would be almost exactly a year later, which definitely does make sense, and will tide us over for a couple of months until Apple Silicon is ready for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. As far as what you should expect for the update, it'll probably be pretty minor. It'll be 10th generation Intel processors and most likely the big Navi AMD GPUs that we're going to see in a couple of days. Actually one day, because it's October 27th and they have a live stream planned for the 28th. So it's gonna be pretty soon. And you should definitely expect those graphics to be in this new computer. So it could be a pretty decent update. It'll really depend on, on what AMD is offering. Uh, but apart from that, it's gonna be a pretty standard spec bump. And again, for those of you who are still gonna put in the comments, oh, it's gonna be Apple Silicon. No, it's not. Stop saying it. We're not gonna address it anymore. Okay, let's move on to the big meat and potatoes of today's news, which is that apparently there is a desktop class Apple Silicon processor in the works. A Chinese language newspaper posted this roadmap, which they say is the different configurations of Apple Silicon processors for the first round of Apple Silicon Macs that we should expect in literally a couple of weeks. This, this rumor is very, very interesting, so let's break it down by looking at the chart. There's not a ton of information here, or at least information that I understand, but we have A14, we already know about that, and then A14X and A14T, which are categorized as Apple Silicon, and then we have the Apple GPU. Obviously, we don't really know what the nomenclature for Apple's GPUs is going to be, but this is yet more information that suggests that Apple is in fact working on a dedicated graphics card. Now, most likely, what we're seeing here is A14X referring to the initial round of MacBooks. That's probably what we're going to see in November. And then A14T is apparently referring to a desktop class iMac processor. Now, what we don't have in this rumor are any information about core counts. And that is where this gets a little bit interesting because we've heard for a couple of months now that Apple is working on a 12 core Apple Silicon processor. However, we've previously understood that to mean that there was going to be two different versions of MacBook processors. One with an eight core chip design, very similar to an A12Z, so it would have four performance cores and four efficiency cores. And then there would be a much more powerful 12 core version with eight high performance cores and four efficiency cores, most likely. Now, this doesn't necessarily rule that untrue, but it does suggest that that 12 core chip could in fact be the desktop processor, meaning that we won't see it in a MacBook, at least initially. Now, if this rumor does turn out to be true, it might be a little bit of a bummer because we've, we've kind of expected that there would be two Apple Silicon processors for a little while now. However, we were kind of assuming, maybe hoping, that both of those processors were going to be available in laptops and then a desktop processor would come later. Now, to be clear, that could still be the case. We don't know whether A14X refers to a family of chips 
or, or even if that's the correct name. Most credible leakers have been saying that A14X won't be the exact name for Apple Silicon that shows up in the Mac. I mean, the A14 is an iPhone chip. X was what they've used for iPads for a number of years now. So it would be a little bit odd to see this showing up in a MacBook and in an iPad. It's, it's a sort of collision of worlds of naming that Apple hasn't really been known to do in the past. But the fact that this newspaper is claiming A14X and A14T seems to suggest that Apple could be going for a unified, basically a yearly nomenclature. So every year we would have like, this year will be the 14 year. So 14, 14X, 14T. And then next year, 15, 15X, and 15T. And then one can only assume that there would be additional suffixes added in future years because only having three different versions of processor would be a little bit limiting. Although, when I say that out loud, that does seem like something Apple would do, right? Like, let's say for example, the, uh, the high-end stuff would get this year's A14T and then the lower end stuff would get last year's chip, and then the really lower end stuff would get two year old chips. Apple's been doing that with, with iPads. I mean, they, they're shipping an A12 in the brand new base iPad. Fortunately, we won't have to wait too long to find out, and before I throw too much cold water on the fire here in terms of which configurations we should expect, I should point out that it is mainly conjecture saying, okay, well, eight cores for A14X, 12 cores for A14T. What I'm basically doing here is trying to contextualize this rumor with what we've heard in the past. We definitely know that there are two Apple Silicon processors in the works. A14X, which makes sense, that's gonna be around for the iPad anyway. And then a mystical 12 core variant that we've heard about before. So basically what I've been doing here is saying, okay, well, we know that there's two processors. Here's this news saying, two different processors. However, what we don't know is whether A14T or whatever nomenclature that is representing is specifically exclusively for desktops. The report suggests that the A14X would be in an iPad Pro and a MacBook and that the A14T would follow in an iMac early next year. However, it's possible with Apple Silicon that, that Apple will be blurring the lines between laptop and desktop. So potentially this could be a processor that finds its way into the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which has an actual cooling system. So th that's something that I've been speculating on because the rumor for the two Apple Silicon Macs that we're expecting in a couple of weeks is that it would be sort of a 12 inch MacBook revival, a fanless design. And then the MacBook Pro would have the A14X or whatever they call it. And then an additional upgraded 12 core processor. So it's possible that this A14T or whatever it's called could end up in both an iMac and a MacBook. I just hope that Apple doesn't end up limiting themselves by only making like three different variants of Apple Silicon chips. It could end up being a little frustrating to find something that suits you specifically if there's only two or three options. I could see some overlap being feasible, however. Like for example, if you upgrade the processor in a 13 or a 14 inch MacBook Pro, you could get the same CPU or the same Apple Silicon that you would find in a lower end 16 inch MacBook Pro and sort of create some linearity through the product stack in that way, however, it would be a little bit strange to have like a laptop Apple Silicon chip and then one desktop chip. I feel like at the very least you would need to break it down into four different configurations, like a low end MacBook Air style and then a 16 inch MacBook Pro with a little bit more horsepower and then a mid range desktop and a high end desktop. It seems like four would be a pretty good number. And that actually kind of reminds me of back when Steve Jobs took over in 1997, when he was returning to Apple, he had that two by two marketing grid for Apple's products. They basically had a laptop for consumers, a laptop for pros, a desktop for consumers, a desktop for pros. 
That would make sense for Apple Silicon, I think. That would be almost a poetic return to the marketing strategy that basically saved Apple over 20 years ago. So whatever you make of this rumor, it's pretty clear that Apple's goal is to unify their products. Basically, they want to design an architecture that can scale from everything down to an Apple Watch or a HomePod, all the way up to a Mac Pro and everything in between. That's just about the most Apple thing that you could possibly imagine. Fortunately, we won't have to wait too long because we are at this point just weeks away from finding out what Apple Silicon Macs are going to look like. So you better be subscribed with notifications on because you know that I'm gonna be covering that stuff a lot. And as I said in my last Apple Silicon video, which you can check out in the description below, don't get your hopes too high. This is a first step. It's going to be a gradual process. So don't expect the world to change completely with these new Macs. But that being said, I am still very excited. So if you like this video, if you're excited for Apple Silicon, leave a like down below, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani and check out my Twitch channel and my subreddit in the description below. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video, which is coming out tomorrow.